I'm Andrew Jacobson, OBO professor at Colorado State University. Today I'll be helping you prepare for the Colorado All-State Band and Orchestra audition. This year's material is taken from the Voxman Selected Studies for Oboe. The slow etude is found on page 19, is in D major, and is marked on Dante con Gusto. Originally, this etude appears in Fairling's 48 Studies for Oboe and is in the same key. If you haven't come across Fairling yet, you may soon as it's a pretty common etude book for the oboe. In this etude, we'll focus on three aspects, pitch, rhythm, and some musical issues. In terms of pitch, there are many familiar structures, including scales, arpeggios, and seventh chords. Since the ear is familiar with these structures, if any one note is out of tune, it will be clear to the listener. For example, in the second and third measures, we start on a D, go down to an A, back up to a D, F sharp, A, and then a high D. This outlines a D major arpeggio or triad, which you and your listeners have heard many times. There are two keys to being successful in playing these structures in tune. First is to train yourself to hear them in tune, and second is to train your body to place them in tune. In order to train your ear, I'd suggest singing or whistling your part with a piano or keyboard nearby, checking each note as you go. Even if you can't sing perfectly in tune, it'll help get those pitches in your ear. So practice singing that first line and make sure you can, at the very least, hit all the right notes. Next, to practice playing in tune, try using a drone on your tuner and setting it on the tonic, in this case, a D. Play a D major arpeggio from low D all the way up to high D and back down again, making sure that every note is in tune with the drone. After you have this down, play the first line of the etude with your drone with the same goal. When you feel that you can make it through that line while staying in tune with the drone, play through it without instead, hearing each note before you play it. Another pitch issue in this etude is when you play a particular note, play some notes in between and come back to that same note. You wanna make sure that the pitch is exactly the same when you come back to it. For example, let's take a look at measures nine through 11. You start out on a long G, have a couple of measures worth of other notes, and then wind up on that same G again. When you get to that second G, the ear hasn't yet forgotten the first one. So these Gs should be exactly at the same pitch level or your audience is gonna complain. A great way to work on this is to start your phrase with a tuner in front of you, making sure that you are starting out with your G dead on. Go ahead and play these two measures, but don't look at your tuner at all. When you reach the next G in the measure 11, hold on to it. Now you can look over at your tuner and see if it's the same G that you started on. Keep working on it until you are consistently successful. In terms of rhythm in this etude, we will discuss two issues. First is making sure that your long notes are exactly the right length, and the other is rhythmic accuracy in the ornamentation. A common spot for inaccurate longer notes in this etude is when you have a dotted quarter tied to an eighth note. Oftentimes, we want to leave the eighth note too soon and get ahead of ourselves. For example, in measure one, measure three, measure four, and so on. The best remedy for this problem is subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. For those of you who don't know what I mean by subdivide, subdivision is simply counting using smaller values in order to maintain accuracy. In this case, you would count eighth note pulses in your head whenever you have a dotted quarter tied to an eighth. Sometimes it's helpful to actually re-articulate those subdivision on your instrument like this. Another rhythmic issue in this etude is in measure five. We have a trill followed by two grace notes and four sixteenths. Turn on your metronome with eighth notes getting the beat. Since the tempo is dotted quarter equals 63, you'll have to put your metronome on 189 so the beats are three times as fast. So let's isolate that starting on the trill and stopping on the F sharp. Make sure that you get, the, get to the F sharp right on time and take care that it lines up right with the metronome. Play that a few times. If you're having trouble, leave out the trill. Just play the E, D sharp, E, F sharp and make sure that you get to the beat on time. Once you have that down, add the trill and see if you can still do it on time. Once that's solid, add the following 16th notes and make certain that you get to the C sharp right on the downbeat lining up with the metronome. 
You'll probably want to do this under tempo at first. Pick a tempo where you can comfortably play it correctly every time, and then gradually increase your tempo until you reach your goal. Some musical issues. A really important task when learning a piece of music is identifying the phrases. You should clearly decide where each phrase starts and ends. Once you have that figured out, find the peak of the phrase. Be really specific here. Don't just say this general area is the peak. Instead, pick a specific note or beat where the phrase reaches its climax. Next, your task is to make sure that you can have a smooth, steady crescendo to the peak and a diminuendo to the end of the phrase. Iron out all those bumps. You may eventually want to add some nuances along the way, but your first step is to be able to have a perfectly even crescendo and diminuendo. Thanks for listening and good luck with your audition. Feel free to contact me with any questions.